first learnt ceramic skills on my BA in ceramics and textiles. I decided to take an MA on and specialise in ceramic design only and just focused on form and getting a much better knowledge of the ceramic world, the colouring and the glazing, which has then led me on to carry on with the body of work I'm doing now. I worked out very soon that the porcelain decides it wants to warp and move in the kiln. And that was a little bit frustrating when I had it of a perfect shape and when it came out it was all kind of slumped. I realised that there was something in there that I could exploit and explore and that was how I came about my manipulated forms. I'm trying to change people's perceptions of what they think a porcelain product should look like. So with the addition of the fabric, the different lace textures and the wallpaper it kind of helps to enhance the fact that it, it could be fabric. Because in the beginning I was very much seeing it, you know, through a ceramicist's eyes. When I started taking it out there, people have said that it also looks like leather or pastry. The actual making process doesn't take that long. What does take the longest time is the drying out process. If I was to make a jug, I could probably have it rolled out, built up and covered in plastic ready to dry out. That would probably take an hour. But it's the drying process which needs to be done at a very slow rate. For a jug it might take three to four weeks to dry out. You absolutely can't rush the drying out process. So for example when there are deadlines coming up and I've tried to speed up the drying by taking the plastic bags off a little bit, the clay will very much have its own way. If it's not happy with how quick you are drying it, it tends to pull apart at the seams. And the majority of times if that's happened then you might as well say goodbye to that piece. So every time a piece goes in the kiln they come out slightly differently, which is very interesting, this kind of idea of serendipity, you know, what will happen will happen. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't work so well, but I guess that's part of the fun. I guess what I want people to be is surprised by what they actually feel, because what people see and what people want to see is perhaps something different. So I guess I'm trying to challenge people's idea of what can be done with porcelain. Even though it was the porcelain that I chose to specialise in because of the translucency, the lighting was a kind of a convenient offshoot, I guess. They're all made in a very similar way to all the other products, but on a larger scale with the texture still. I started with a series of pendant lights, sort of different sizes, and now I'm able to design a series of table lights as well. I was initially trying to manipulate it with my hands, which I felt was not very beneficial, so I thought some sort of quick impact upon the clay might be better. So I picked up a slabbing lath and just pretty much forced my hand down onto it and it created an interesting curve and I thought, ah, oh. immediately there was something there which I thought I wanted to do a bit more experimenting with. I guess the important thing with the hitting is to make sure the clay is at the right readiness. If it's too dry, it will crack and it will pull apart. If it's too soft, it will crumple far too much into itself. So there's the balance of knowing if it's ready and how hard to hit it.